Hey, what's going on guys? It is Caleb, and today we're going to continue right where we left off in the previous video. Previously, we reviewed the story so far, learning, uh, we're not necessarily learning, we're more uh, reviewing the objects and introducing some new concepts to familiar constructions. Today, we're going to be doing objects and objects everywhere, which is a deeper look into the true nature of objects in JavaScript. So if you're not already at CodeAcademy.com, make sure to head over to CodeAcademy.com. Also, if you're not already in full screen, Make sure to go ahead and watch full screen 720p, you know, because these videos come out in HD. Hey. Also, finally, or I said also like three times now in a row, but finally, <laughs> if you're not already subscribed, make sure to subscribe for more and future content um, covering Code Academy and all of its courses. So uh, let's go ahead and get started by resetting our editor. And ID, please. All right. Let's get our hands dirty and start exploring some really cool stuff about objects in JavaScript. But before we can do that, how can we even tell if something is an object, as opposed to, say, a number or a string? It would be great if we could tell what type something is in JavaScript. Good thing there's a handy built-in operator to do this. Say we have a variable, or a thing, and we don't know what type this thing is. We can call type of this thing to figure this out. Generally, the most useful types are numbers, strings, functions, and of course, objects. As an example, the following example will print object. So here we can see they created an object named some object, and it has some property and some values. And now if you see our console.log statement, we are using the type of operator, and we're telling it whatever um, our object's name or whatever our variable's name that we're going to uh, run the operator to. And in this case, we're saying type of some object, which is an object that we have stated above. And this will return whether or not, or it will, it will return whatever type of object it is, or not necessarily object, but what kind of um, <clears throat> operator, not operator, but what kind of uh, data it is, whether it's a string, uh, var not a variable, but a, a <laughs> whether it's a string, and a function, object, or number, whatever. So, in lines 3 through 6, we have an object, a number, and a string, in that order. Complete lines 7 through 9, so they'll print the appropriate types of these variables. So, as you can see in our editor, we have an object, a string, and a number. And all those things relate to what they are, so they're pretty self-explanatory. An object is an object. A number is a number, and a string is a string. Now down here in our console.log statements, you see that we have a comment on the right-hand side, which tells you it should return an object. So what we want to do here is type in our type of. Now, all we have to do is say type of, and it should turn purple, and then whatever our variable's name, so we're going to say object, or a-N-O-B-J. Now here we just say type of, and then whatever our variable's name is, which is a number. And then finally, we should say type of, and then a string. And as you can see, whenever we run this, we should get object, number, then string. So if we go ahead and click submit, we get object, number, then string. So we got the green light. Let's go on to the next lesson and reset our code. Know thyself. In the last exercise, we used type of to figure out what type of variable in JavaScript is. Since we know how to tell objects apart from everything else now, let's focus on them. You wouldn't know it, but every object in JavaScript comes with some baggage. Stay tuned for this, or stay tuned for more on this. Part of this baggage includes a method called has own property. This, let us know, or this lets us know if an object has a particular property. We show how to use has own property in the last two lines. It returns true or false, based on whether an object has a certain property. You should be finish my object by giving it a name property. Make sure that my object does not have a nickname property so that the last line will print false. So pretty much what this does is it takes whatever your variable name is, whether if it's an object or a uh, function or a string or whatever, and it's going to use this new keyword or this new built-in operator has own property 
really it's a method but um not an operator it's a method my my uh my mistake there but once you call this method you're going to pass in whatever the property name that you want it to check in this case we're checking to see if my object which is declared up here on lines one through four and we're going to check to see if it has a name property currently it doesn't but we need to create one so to do this just say name colon and we can just say something like Caleb now that we have that on line 7 it's going to console.log has own property nickname now it didn't want us to write a nickname because it wanted us to get true than false so if we leave it as is we should be able to pass this little lesson so let's go ahead and save and submit our code and as you can see we got true then false because we do have a property of name that returns Caleb if we were to call that name property of our object. Now that's going to return true whenever we call my object has property or has own property. My uh, my mistake there once again. My object ha ha uh, has own property and then name will return true because we do have a name property in our object. But as you can see we do not have a nickname property so we do get false. So let's go ahead and start the next lesson. And let's reset our code. The press to impress, or dress to impress. <laughs> Let's get some practice working with has own property. It has an invaluable tool, tool when working, or it is an invaluable tool when working with objects. Try to run the code in the editor as is. You should get an error because shorts is not a property of the suitcase objects. Let's write some code to test for this so we can avoid this nasty error later. Remove the console.log statement. Write an if statement that checks to see if suitcase has the shorts property. If your if statement evaluates the true, print the value of the shorts property. If your if statement evaluates the false, set the shorts property to any value you wish using dot notation. Then print the value of the shorts property. Okay, so this is pretty easy, pretty simple. All we have to do, like I said, delete this console.log. Now, within this, or outside of this, we can just go ahead and make it on line 5. If we were to go ahead and say, go ahead and say if suitcase dot has own property, because we're checking to see whether or not if it has this new property, and we're going to check to see if it has shorts. Now, if it does have shorts, we're just going to say, okay, console.log. And then we're going to say suitcase dot shorts. There we go. Now we're just going to print out, if it does have shorts, we're going to say, okay, we'll just print out whatever your shorts values is equal to. Now, else, if you don't happen to have shorts, well, we're going to create that, them, we're going to create them for you. So we're going to say suitcase dot shorts equals and then whatever kind of shorts you want to make and um, I'm gonna say khakis and I think that's how you spell khakis but I'm not 100% positive on that also we are now going to console dot log our suitcase dot shorts once again now if we go ahead and submit the code as you can see we don't have any um, shorts right now but we should still be able to see khakis in our uh, console. So let's go ahead and save and submit our code. And as you can see, we do get khakis because we created the um, khakis property in our if statement. So way to go. Let's go on to the next lesson. All right, and reset our code. <laughs> getting in in time, or getting in time eight. <laughs> Let's now learn how to work with all the properties that belong to an object. We introduce the for in loop. Let's define some object. Var dog equals, and this is an object, we're using literal notation here. So species, bulldog, age is three, the color is brown, and then we're closing off our object. It is often useful to be able to run code on all the properties of an object all at one time. As a simple example, let's say we want to print out all the properties of the object dog. 
We could do this by printing out each property name individually, but that gets tedious, and if you have many properties in the object, it would be very time consuming. This is where the for in loop is useful. Below is the code in which we would get the job done. For our temporary variable, which we're declaring and we're setting it as property, and dog, then console.log property. The word var and in are keywords. We need them to always be there. We can replace dog with any object that we want the for loop to run through. And you can think of the property as a placeholder variable. You can use any word you want here. In English, what is the code doing? It says assign the first property of the dog object to the variable property. Run the code here it is to print the property to the console. Then assign the second property of the dog object to the variable property. Again, run the code in the curly brace or brackets. Keep repeating this until the properties of the dog have been assigned to property. And the instructions are use a for in loop to print out all the properties of NYC. So if we go ahead and um, go down on line 9, let's go ahead and just start to write our for in loop. Now I know these are new, and um, I'll cover them in a second after we write our little um, our little for in loop. But if we go ahead and say var or for starting from the um, top, we just say for just like a normal for loop, and then we can just something like var key in nyc, and then if we do open curly braces, we're just going to console dot log our key. Now you may be wondering, well, what is this doing? Okay, so a little background information on for and loops and how they are compared to for loops. Whenever you have a for loop, usually you're trying to modify the data or you're trying to get data and um, do something with it. In other words, a for and loop is only reading the data. So it's a lot faster, it's a lot more efficient, there's no modifying anything, you're just pretty much going to loop through it and read what it has. So that's the main big differences between a for and a for in loop. Now how they're, um, how they're uh, structured is it's pretty similar but kind of different in ways because you have the end keyword. As you can see, we first create a, a variable. Now this variable can be any name we want. Usually in a for loop we use the i variable and most of the time we set i to zero. So here you can easily say key is i. So if you wanted to replace this key and put i, you can sure as well do it. Now what it's saying here in NYC, NYC is the object or whatever variable you want to look through or loop through. This can be arrays, um, anything that has a lot of uh, properties or data stored within it. Now. After we loop through each time, it's just kind of saying for i is less than our um, object's dot length, or you know if you're using array array dot length, or um, you wouldn't really use object dot length, but <laughs> you would uh, pretty much add one each time because it's automatically incrementing one, or it's going through every slot of available data that's t already currently taken up. So when I say this, I mean it's going to loop through all these uh, properties within our uh, object. And down here in our console, or not in our console, but within our curly braces, we're console.logging our key. And remember, key is just a placeholder of our property. So whenever we first loop through, the key is going to be the full name. And then after loop through again, it's going to be the mayor the population, and then the boroughs. So if we go ahead and save and submit our code, we're going to get the full name, mayor, populations, and boroughs. So let's go ahead and start the next lesson, because we got it correct, and let's reset our editor. List all the properties. We've just seen how to print all of an object's properties names with a for and loop, but how do we print out all the values associated with every property? Surprise! The for and loop will be our friend again. Let's get here slowly. Our dog object can help us. Var dog, and it's creating a new object. And it, now, once again, we have the species of a bulldog, the age of three, and a color of brown. 
First, remember that dog.species equals dog species, and we're using bracket notation here, and it is equaling out the building. Or bulldog, my bad, bulldog. And if we say var x equals species, then dog x equals bulldog, because we are just passing in our x, which is really we're passing in species here, and it's referring back to the dog species, which, which once again will result in bulldog. So, what we see, or we see that by assigning the property name to a variable, we can then use the variable name in bracket notation to get the property's value. So to get all the values from the dog object, we would use the for in loop and the bracket notation we just saw above. See the hint to see the code to print the property values for dog. So the instructions are, write another for in loop, but this time, print the value of each property in NYC. Okay, well, using the bracket notation, just like stated above, all we have to do is just say for var y, and really this can be whatever you want. If you want to have i, or you can put whatever you want here. So, we just say i. For i in NYC, Open curly brace, console.log, NYC, and then whatever your uh, temporarily variable is. In this case, it's i, so you're going to pass an i. And this is going to refer to our NYC object, then whatever property, whether it's going to be the first property, because remember, we can index things using um, bracket notation. Remember, it starts from zero and it counts all the way up to however many properties it has. So if we go ahead and save and submit our code. We should get the green light, and we should also have our property uh, values printed out onto the screen. So, if you got this far and you managed to get everything correct, congratulations, you finished another section. And only a couple more to go, and then you finish the whole JavaScript course. So, stay tuned for more videos, and hopefully, guys, you guys are catching right along and up to speed with me. If I'm going too fast, you know, just leave a comment down below saying, hey, slow down a little bit. But if these videos help you guys out, make sure to like the videos. Also, don't forget to subscribe, guys. Uh, plenty more courses and a lot more videos coming soon. And until next time, guys, have a nice night. Peace.